You're listening to Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney, with experts and insiders on what you need to know in Northeast Ohio. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Three Things to Know podcast. I'm Stephanie Haney, and this is a very special edition of the Three Things to Know podcast today. I am joined by the one, the only, the illustrious Leon Bibb, our senior commentator here at 3 News. Leon, thank you for being with me today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be with you, Stephanie. Always a pleasure to be with you. We are just here to pick your brain and celebrate all the things that are Leon Bibb. Leon, you have been working in this industry, especially here in Cleveland, for quite some time. I'm curious, how did you get a start in broadcast journalism? Well, believe it or not, really, the the whole idea of journalism started when I was 11 years old in the sixth grade in in Cleveland. And uh, my sixth grade teacher asked me if I would write the sixth grade graduation play because he says I was pretty good with with words and writing and things. So we had a sixth grade graduation play that I authored and and I wasn't the star in it, but I was one of the featured featured people in it. But I uh, and uh, after that, the, we presented the play and Mr. Robert Taylor told me, he said that I had a gift for words and he said it was a God given gift. And if he uh, uh, he, he advised me that I should go into journalism or, or into playwriting for theater. And uh, so I chose journalism right at that precise moment. That wasn't the year I did it, but that was the precise moment in my 11 years of life that I chose to be a journalist. So uh, that that was my whole focus was on was on journalism. And I went off to college to to study journalism. And then uh, uh, in, upon graduation from Bowling Green State University, got a job with the Cleveland Plain Dealer. I was 21 years old a staff reporter for the Cleveland Plain Dealer until I got drafted into the war in Vietnam mm-hmm. and in Vietnam in the middle of the jungle in an artillery unit I see a group of television reporters uh, network correspondents and I said I think I could do that too so uh, after after the army I took the GI Bill, went back to college, working toward a second degree, uh, uh, aim, aiming toward broadcasting, and majored in radio, television, film, and that's how I got into television, and I've been in television ever since. So you've been in television since that moment you got back here. Have you been here in Cleveland the whole time, or have you moved around at all? No, I moved around. I, I, I worked, uh, of course, I did television in college, college television at Bowling Green, and my first job in commercial television was in Toledo at the CBS station, WTOL, Channel 11, where I worked for a year, and then took a job in Columbus uh, at WCMH, the NBC in Columbus, Ohio, where I worked for almost seven years, six and a half years. And then Channel 3 called me in 1979 and asked me if I would be willing to leave Columbus to come to Cleveland to anchor the weekend newscast. And we said, yeah. So. I've been in Cleveland ever since 1979, working at two different stations, but but working in Cleveland since 1979, straight through. Really, I've been working in television since 1971, straight through. No breaks, straight through. No, no breaks at all. That's absolutely incredible. Leon, I have to ask you, in that time, since you've seen it all, you've been you've been around lots of places here in Ohio. How have things changed in the industry? Oh, well, this, technologically, the industry's changed because of uh, uh, cell phones, because of I've seen the, the incoming of videotape. When I started, we were in the final days of 16 millimeter film. And then we went to videotape and now we're digital. Things have changed and then the Internet and all of that has changed everything. But some things remain the same. And that's who, what, when, where, why and how. Reporters have to answer those questions, and re- whether whether you use a typewriter to, to write your story, or a computer screen to write your story, or a quin, a, a pen and pencil, or a quill dipped in ink, it's still you got to answer those questions as much as you can, and it is still about journalism. So everything really begins with the written word. And you do such a beautiful job telling these stories. Leon, I have to tell you, I could listen to you read a grocery list. You have such a <laughs> soothing voice. Yeah, we'll be buying broccoli today and a quart of milk <laughs> <laughs> perfect perfect now leon you have been such a source as our senior commentator here at channel three throughout the past you know year and a half and longer than that since i've been here i've been around for about two years but such a source of just 
steadfast calm and inspiration especially through the things everyone's been going through the pandemic over the past you know almost two years year and a half now where do you find that inspiration oh i'm just i i just stay aware of 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 what's going on and uh wherever we are in the city or wherever we are in the nation uh, we have probably been there before or somewhere along similar lines and I think that in the long run, we we will we will win out. We will do what's the right thing to do. Uh, there may be missteps along the way. So I always I always keep that in mind, Stephanie. When 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 I'm uh, when I'm reporting on a story, many of the stories that I report on a daily basis, uh, or or comment on on a daily basis, I've commented on before, or I've seen it before, maybe in a different fashion. You know, during the pandemic, we did a lot waiting for the vaccine. I'm old enough to remember waiting for the polio vaccine. Mm. I'm old enough to remember standing in line in school, getting that shot in my arm in elementary school, uh, the polio vaccine to keep children and adults, too, from coming down with polio. We've been through this before and uh, and we will survive this pandemic as well. Of course, there are going to be missteps along the way and we're going to lose people along the way but i think generally speaking we'll get through this we may be changed when we come out but we will get through it so i i keep that in mind and uh i just try to do the right thing and and and, and stay focused on on what's important and uh what keeps me inspired and i look for i look for those different ways to tell a story or different ways to to do a commentary well, your metaphors throughout it all have been just beautiful to watch. And there is so much to be said for that experience. You've really been just a guiding light throughout this. Now, you talk about having seen so many of the things that you talk about with us before. Are there any particular stories, any particular moments throughout your career that stand out for you as really meaningful or impactful moments or moments where you were experienced those things maybe for the first time? Uh, yeah, there, there, there's always a, a first time. Uh, in fact, I got one on my wall over here. I can lift that off. Oh, there, it came off easily. That's uh, Leon and uh, President Obama mm -hmm. right there. And that's in the White House. Wow. And I got a phone call. I got a phone call from the White House, which, and they asked me if I would be willing to. Uh, interview the president and they would make it exclusive that would that was in 2011 and uh, I said of course I'd love to go to the White House and they say well we can make this exclusive to the state of Ohio nobody else from Ohio will do a one-on-one -on -one with him and this is in the this photograph is in the White House complex and and President Obama we sat down for about 15 20 minutes and we, and we chatted uh, chatted about what was going on in the nation what was going on in his administration at that time and we had a couple of laughs along the way even before the camera started we were laughing and, and kind of joking with each other so that that was a that that that, that in, in in itself is a story so so that that was one of the stories that, that I certainly remember uh 1980 81 I think it was I had an opportunity to fly with the US Air Force Thunderbirds back wow. in a Thunderbird jet uh, uh, in Ohio, uh, as we were getting ready for the Cleveland National Air Show at Berkeley Fun Airport. And I had a chance to, to fly back seat with the USF for Thunderbirds. And I think I got a photograph over on the other side of the wall. I'm down in my, my back, my bar area of my, uh, of my home right now. And I got a chance to fly with the Thunderbirds. That was a kick. Uh, in 1992, I think it was, I got a chance to, to uh, represent Channel 3 uh, and be embedded with uh, a U.S. Coast Guard unit, which was called to active duty in the Persian Gulf War, the first Gulf War. And this was for Operation Desert Shield just before we went to Operation Desert Storm. And for one week, I was in the Persian Gulf with a U.S. military unit from Cleveland reporting on what they were doing. And I spent one week over there and filed a series of reports, maybe two and three reports a day for Channel 3, WKYC. And then when I came back, I did a half hour or an hour long special on, on my, my uh the the movements of that of that unit that coast guard unit and what it was like so you know the, all along there have been stories i've fed the network been on the network a few times and 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 covered just about everything there is to cover in cleveland one way or the other i've had a piece of it one way or the other 
just incredible to be, you know, all of those stories, absolutely incredible. But to be the one person in Ohio that the White House is calling and saying, would you like to sit down with President Barack Obama? Would you like to have a one on one with that? That speaks to the storied career of Leon Bibb. That's just incredible. Yeah, that that was a that was a very interesting day uh, when I met met with the president. I had interviewed him over satellite interviews before when he was a U.S. senator running for president. But this was the first time that I had a chance to to sit down knee to knee with him. We were really almost that close in, in the White House to, to do an interview. And uh, they uh, a woman came in and she did him a little television makeup. And I was looking at this from another room. There was a crack in the door and I'm looking through it because they seated him before they brought me in. And this this makeup woman was doing television makeup on his face. And I said to myself, well, I didn't know President Obama was going to be wearing television makeup. I mean, he's going to be looking good. So I went <laughs> in my bag and I pulled out my makeup kit. And I says, well, I got, I, if I'm going toe to toe with the president, I want to look okay too. So we, we had, we had a laugh. About, I told him that story and we had a laugh about that. And, and we talked about LeBron James a little bit playing basketball for then the Miami heat. And he, he asked me if Cleveland was over LeBron leaving Cleveland to go to Miami. And I says, Mr. President, we're struggling with it. We're struggling with it. He says, well, I guess you guys will be OK. Maybe he'll come back. But in the meantime, I think LeBron James and the Miami Heat are going to probably win the NBA, which they did. Well, he called that one. He certainly he, did. He, he called that one. Yeah, it was. It was quite. A, it was quite. It was quite an experience for, for for me. It was. It was my second time in the White House. Second time with a president. I had been with President uh, George uh, H. W. Bush, the elder. I'd been with him at a at a luncheon and had lunch with him. Well, it was seventy people and the president of the United States. But I was invited to be one of seventy uh, reporters from around the country to 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 have lunch with the president and then get a chance to, in news conference fashion, to to interview him, in a news conference fashion. But it was not a one on one. Mm. But Obama was a one on one. Mm -hmm. It sure was. And uh, if you're watching, if you're listening to this podcast, you can see the photo on the WKYC YouTube page, just uh, just so you know, the WKYC YouTube page. And of course, it'll be on WKYC.com as well. Now, Leon, you've had incredible experiences in the journalism field, but let's talk about some of the things you do outside of the world of journalism, because you're also a very talented performer, constantly having things going on. So tell us a little bit about that. My wife wonders, what are you what are you going to do next? She she, she opens the newspaper to find out, oh, I see you're sp starring in a, in a in a play somewhere. I didn't know. Why didn't you tell me that? I said, oh, I forgot. <laughs> We're going into rehearsals next week. I have to tell her sometimes. Uh, yeah, I do a little bit of theatrical stuff around town. I, I've been, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 different plays over the last many years. And uh, uh, some of them, I was a, just a, f a featured featured actor, and a couple of them, I was starring actor. A few years ago, uh, uh, D. Perry, who used to work over at W. Uh, 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 Viz Television, and and worked at a, at a radio station as well. My friend D. Perry and I starred in Same Time Next Year, a romantic comedy, and we were on stage for fourteen performances with the Cleveland Heights Ensemble Theater. And Dee and I were the only two people in this play, which covers a 26 year period in the lives of two people who meet romantically one weekend every year for a period of 26 years. We're the only people in the play. So I'm on stage for two straight hours. Dee and I are the only ones. And when we went into this, I said, how am I going to learn all of these lines? We're speaking the entire time. Will I remember all of these lines? And the producer of the play said, Leon, when we finish with rehearsals, not only will you know your lines, you will know all of these lines. And you know the <laughs> entire play. We had 14 performances and it was a kick. Uh, the funny thing about it is, Stephanie, I was still doing television news at the time and I was anchoring the six o'clock and the 11 o'clock news. And I would go, I would leave at, at 6.30 for a 7.30 or eight o'clock curtain and, and do the play and then hustle back to the station to do the 11 o'clock news. I never <laughs> missed a newscast. That's incredible. That is absolutely incredible. Absolutely speaks to your talent. Yeah. Leon, do you have any upcoming theatrical performances coming down the line? 
I don't think we've got anything for uh, 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 upcoming theatrical performances. I'm always asked to do a piece of poetry or something like that at, at a function. I might do a piece of poetry, uh, but uh, we're working. I'm working on a on, on a on a book. Believe it or not, I'm working on a book on some events that have taken place in my life that were kind of outside the realm of, of journalism, and uh, we're we're in talks right now. Uh, looking for a publisher, and, and I think we might have one on, on, on the hook right now. We're, we're looking, and we're also looking at some things up and beyond the book, some things that, that, that go beyond the book. Uh, we're looking at some some theatrical things. So I, I'm always looking for something like that, but, but I'm always involved in, in something special, always something special, almost not every weekend, but uh, a few times a year, several times a year. I, I'd be on stage, maybe reading a piece of poetry or or, uh, or or telling a story. There's something called Modern Warrior that that I'm involved in uh, with a, a wonderful trumpeter uh, by, by the name of uh, uh, F Dominic Farinacci. Dominic Farinacci and a, and a young actor by the name of James Poling, and it is called Modern Warrior. And this is a story of James Poling going off to the war in Afghanistan. And it is mixed with music, live music, uh, live narration on stage, uh, uh, songs, uh, live jazz music. And it's a wonderful production that, that, that I'm a part of. Uh, and I come in for a small part of it and, and play a featured role. And I tell of my experiences in the war in Vietnam. And it is about welcoming home troops, American troops who have gone off to war and have come back. And the strange thing about it is what, what we've understood and what I've long known is when I tell my experiences of the war in Vietnam a long time ago, and James Poling tells his experiences of the war in Afghanistan, we see there the similarities really outweigh any differences. It is very much the same and, and how he felt coming home and how he was rewarded coming home and how he was honored for what he did in Afghanistan and, and during the Iraq war and all that time period coming home and how those of us who served in Vietnam, how we came home and we did not get that welcome at all. Nobody mm -hmm. said much of anything. In fact, uh, many people held the war against the people that they asked to go to war. Mm -hmm. So we, we talk about that in, in, in Modern Warrior. It's a wonderful theatrical production and we're working to take this thing on the road. Okay, and in, in this production, in Modern Warrior, you are telling your true life stories, you're not playing a character, right? I play, I tell my true life story, my okay. story, okay. Leon Dibbs story. Mm -hmm. I look forward to hearing more about that. And I think we just got a scoop there about a forthcoming Leon Bibb book. That's a book that I am absolutely, absolutely interested to read. You're the first to hear that. Oh, well, thank you. The book is thank complete. You. We, the book is complete. We're just shopping it around right now. Okay. Well, I look forward to hearing those details as well. All right, Leon, we do a couple things here on the Three Things to Know podcast. Before I let you go, we've got to share your wealth of knowledge. We've got a little segment here. We call it Need to Know in NEO. And if there's anybody who can tell us what we need to know in NEO here in Northeast Ohio, it is Leon Bibb. So what would you, what do you recommend? What do people need to know about here? I think they need to know about a wonderful area uh, uh, that, that, uh, that I grew up within uh, oh, a 30 second walk of this area. And it's called the Cultural Gardens of Cleveland. A lot of people have heard about it, but very few people, I think, generally in recent decades, have have decided to have to walk through the cultural gardens of Cleveland. They run from roughly Lake Erie to a University Circle on the city's east side through the Glenville area, and uh, and through part of the Wade Park area as well. They are located on on the MLK uh, Drive and on East Boulevard, two levels, and there are 33 gardens the Cleveland Cultural Gardens, uh, and uh, each garden represents an ethnic community, a, a group of, uh, of people who settled in Cleveland. There, there, there's a, there, there's a, a, a British garden, there, there, there's a, a Hebrew garden, as it is called, there's a German garden, there's an African-American garden, Polish garden, an Indian garden, uh, 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 and uh, a Swedish garden, and they all were, have flags of their respective countries that they are representing and uh i grew up with the with these gardens the gardens were established i think in the late 1920s on land which was donated to the city by john d rockefeller the 
billionaire who who started in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And these gardens have been there ever since the 1920s. Well, when I was growing up in Cleveland, we were in the gardens all the time because I lived about a 30 second jog from the Italian garden. I could walk to the Italian garden in a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. And my mother and my father would often be in the gardens uh, oh, in the evening hours. We would just walk through these lush gardens, which are maintained by the city of Cleveland. I think they are an, a little known gemstone. They were known well when I was growing up because the city, uh, many, most of the people in Northeast Ohio lived inside the city. Not so many people live in the suburbs that they may not be aware of the cultural gardens of Greater Cleveland. And they are a wonderful place. That's one of the things I think people should know about. Well, I'm certainly learning about them right now, and I'm so glad that you're sharing that with us. Uh, another segment that we do here is called A Good Follow. So when you mentioned to me when I asked you about what you might want to share with us and you mentioned the Cleveland Cultural Gardens, I did a little bit of research. I think people should know that they dedicate their Instagram account to their annual event called One World Day. Mm -hmm. So if you follow Instagram, slash one world day the username is one world day you can uh, learn all about that event which is once every year end of august they just had their 75th anniversary and it's a it sounds like it's a really beautiful event have you made it to the one world day event i have not made it to the one world day they'd, they'd ask me if i would be one of the masters of ceremony because because of my ties to the cultural gardens because they they hold one world day in the cultural gardens i was unable to do it because i was committed to a, an another event the the last two years they've asked me and i'm unable to do it but we're going to try and squeeze it in if they are kind enough to ask me again i will try i will try and do that but, but uh, I'm well aware of One World Day. And, and what I like about those gardens, indeed it is One World. Uh, some years ago, uh, uh, Stephanie, they were, they were reworking the gardens. They were cutting away shrubbery and the, some of the gardens had fallen in, in, in disrepair. So they wanted to go in and rework the gardens. And they took some of the bronze statues of of well-known people from throughout the Marconi in the Italian garden and Shakespeare in the British garden and, 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 and Abraham Lincoln in the American garden. They took some of the big bus, B-U-S-T-S, those, the bus, bronze bus of them, and they took them away for cleaning and things like that. And they put them all in one warehouse. And I did a piece uh, for, for, for television, oh, this was a long time ago, on those bus being in one warehouse. And they were all mixed together, all from various ethnic groups. And I said, in this one area, they are all together in this one warehouse where the Italian and the American and the African-American and the, and, and, and the Pole and, and the Scandinavian, the bus are all together without a, a, a designation as to what garden they belong to. And then they eventually clean them and, and put them back in their respective gardens. But I like to think of uh, the, the the Cleveland Cultural Gardens as a as kind of a United Nations, representing so many of us in this country. And uh, I like to think that uh, that would be a, a good way for Americans to uh, view this country, view me, view you, and view everybody else. We're all Americans in this country, no matter from where our ancestors may have come. They may have come on different ships but really we're all in the same boat right now or should absolutely be. absolutely and that is that's their theme at the gardens is the peace of mutual understanding yeah. what a beautiful sentiment to end on there leon i want to thank you for the time for your time sharing your experience with us and your knowledge of the cleveland area thanks for being here on the three things to know podcast oh it's been wonderful for me i i, I absolutely enjoyed it anytime just give me a call you you know where i am I'm <laughs> that's true tomorrow. That's true. I can find you. Okay. Thank you so much, Leon. And thank you to everyone listening to the Three Things to Know podcast and watching today. Uh, we'll be back with more next week. In the meantime, please subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe to the WKYC YouTube channel. Leave us a rating and review. And this is a particularly good one, I may say, to share with your friends. And I will see you back next week on Three Things to Know. Thanks for listening to Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney from WKYC Studios. Subscribe now to stay in the know.